Thank you. Um, good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests, teachers, students, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Stephanie Ma from the University of Hong Kong. I'm also uh, a member of the Hong Kong Young Academy of Sciences. So it gives me great pleasure to be able to introduce our uh, inauguration educational talk series on nature's red pencil, writing and rewriting genomes. So. Um, at the university, I take on a role as a teacher. Uh, so I teach a uh, Bachelor of Biomedical Science as well as uh, early years medical students in the MBBS program. I also actually run a research lab. So I'm also a researcher. I'm a cell biologist uh, where I study um, cancer research. Um, and in the lab, we use various state-of-the-art techniques like um, uh, animal models um, and uh, molecular biology. And recently, one of the tools that have really also revolutionized the way we do research is gene editing, which is the focus of our talk today. So um, to begin, okay, um, I'm sure everyone knows what DNA is. DNA is the building blocks of our life. Uh, DNA, uh, basically, it's composed of um, uh, uh, bases uh, called A, T, C, and G that comes together to match and then form a structure like a, uh, called the double, the, uh, double helix, uh, which is sort of like a twisted ladder. Okay? And um, DNA that gets transcribed into RNA and that translated into protein uh, to encode for things called genes. And genes are, are found in our cells, of course, in the human body, and can actually um, uh, dictate many of our characteristics, like how tall we are, color of our eyes, color of our hair, if our hair is curly or, or straight, etc. So you can view DNA as the instruction in, of our life. So then DNA, where do we get our DNA from? Of course, from our parents. So we inherit our DNA from our dad and mom. So more specifically, we actually inherit two sets of genes from them. Um, and then these two sets of genes come together and then gets reshuffled into a new set of instructions. So that's why you and your brother or your sister looks different, although you're inheriting the same set of genes from your mother and your father. And sometimes these instructions can have errors in them, they have mutations in them, and this is when problems occur. So faulty genes can lead to serious illnesses. So for humanity has really have had long history of um, of coming up with ways of editing genes. So for a long time, uh, we have been figuring out of ways of, say, uh, crossbreeding our plants to make them more nutritious to eat or better to eat. But with gene editing, we have really made a big leap forward. So what is gene editing? Gene editing is actually a DNA editing technique that works like a biological version of a word processing program's find and replace function. So um, unlike, uh, so basically it is a genetic engineering technique that basically allows you to add bases or uh, delete bases or modify or change a DNA sequences. Um, but unlike uh, conventional genetic engineering techniques that just randomly integrates DNA into the genome, the gene editing tools that we have now are a lot more specific and a lot more accurate. So this table here sh uh, shows like uh, the, th uh, the three latest uh, or most commonly used platforms of gene editing, including sync finger nucleases, talons, as well as CRISPR-Cas9. So CRISPR-Cas9 in particular is one of the uh, latest platforms and the most widely used. And it is also the most um, economical to use, the most um, accurate, as, as well as the most efficient. So um, I'll leave the details to our uh, keynote speakers, but just briefly, CRISPR is made up of two components, a guide RNA and also an enzyme. So briefly how it works is the CRISPR guide can come in and precisely locate a, a specific region of DNA that it wants to modify. Then the Cas9 enzyme will come in and clip it out and also um, replace it or, or modify it or delete it or, or, replace an, or replace it with another stretch of DNA that gets introduced at the same time. So by this means, CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing can replace a faulty gene with a new one or change a gene to make it behave differently. So as I mentioned, CRISPR-Cas9 or gene editing in general has really revolutionized the way we do research in a lab setting. But however, it has also has far reaching um, implications in just human health in general. But with such a new technology and um, at such an early stage, we really have to weigh out the positives and the negatives. So for instance, um, gene editing has, of course, can have implications in how we treat human diseases. So in 2015, a group of doctors have actually cured a baby's girl leukemia by editing the immune cells in this girl um, to treat her drug-resistant leukemia. 
there are also ways um, to uh, there are on, there are also trials that are ongoing to edit genes that can possibly predispose humans to cancer or hereditary diseases. So, for example, if we know a gene that will cause blindness or cystic fibrosis or Huntington's disease. Um, Huntington's disease is a, is a particular disease that actually breaks down nerve cells in, in the brain. We can also edit these genes to prevent um, the disease from occurring. And if we edit genes in animals, um, there is also a group of researchers that want to edit genes of mosquitoes to prevent them from carrying malaria. However, there are also downsides. So sometimes um, uh, people may want to um, edit genes that to, to, to model uh, a, a pet or a baby uh, to what they think should be perfect. So this can raise the possibilities of designer babies, designer pets. So for example, you can edit gene um, to say, for example, make, make sure that my baby have 20-20 vision or have that who will not go bald when they grow older or uh, will have the perfect height or the perfect fit. So these are designer babies. And, um, and for some people that do not have uh, good wishes, they can also add the genes to make violent microbial disease that can wipe out crops or even human mankind. And in fact, actually, um, US has actually also called gene editing a weapons of mass destru destruction, um, calling CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing uh, easy to use, but also very hard to control. So um, I hope I have just briefly talked about or give you an introduction of a taste of what gene editing is and uh, what are kind of implications that it may bear. Um, don't ask me for more because I don't know the details, but luckily we have a good lineup of uh, our keynote speakers today uh, that will help me with this. So um, uh, Dr. Bo Gao um, is an assistant professor from the School of uh, Medical Sciences, Faculty of Medicine at Hong Kong U, also my colleague, and he will start um, today's talk by um, telling you about the history and basics of gene editing. Then Dr. Ellen Wong, also an assistant professor in the School of Biomedical Sciences Faculty of Medicine at Hong Kong U, will then tell you about the tools and applications of gene editing. Then we'll end with Dr. Angela Wu uh, in the Division of Life Science, as well as Biomedical Engineering at Hong Kong UST, where she will share about um, ethics, as well as her experience with entrepreneurship relating to gene editing. So with that, I'd like to end. Thank you very much for your time.